Oh, Jack, what about, uh, I think, seven goals down in that game? Scotty Hodges went berserk. Yeah, well, at three-quarter time, I went up to Scott, and I said, Scotty, you've done nothing. So you got, <laughs> I did. And I said, you've got five minutes. If you don't do anything in five minutes, yeah. you're off the ground. Yeah. You won the game. Well, he listened, Thanks. yeah. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. How important, what was the pressure to win? Once we'd announced that we wanted to be an AFL club, everyone was against us. What was the pressure like to win that premiership? Um, we didn't really notice it because we had to win games. So we were there to play football. The board, they had the vision. They, they knew Port Adelaide would go higher and further. Uh, so we left off field to them. We concentrated on field and uh, the, the players were excellent. They were very, very good to coach, you know. I loved it. I loved every minute. Greg, off-field, Jack just mentioned it. How many, how many hours a week do you reckon you were putting in to make all of this happen? Well, not myself, but I think uh, certainly at the board level it would have to be uh, you know, 20, 30 hours a week solid, particularly to get that second licence. Yeah. You saw the vision there where you rolled up with a suitcase. I mean, that, we all remember it. They were, that was in all the news services right around the country. I mean, the document was the biggest thing we've ever seen. Yeah, well, we wanted to show people um, that uh, we had the best plan. And I know some of the committee that were there at the time, uh, one guy called John Hurd was on this committee and uh, he didn't look at the plan. He just looked at the bloody suitcase and he said they should get it. <laughs> so it was great. <laughs> yeah. Stephen, let's fast forward a little bit. You take over from Jack as coach of Port Adelaide. Foss Williams, John Cale, you then take over. That's enormous pressure. It was. It was um, obviously, you know, we'd had fantastic success under Jack. Uh, Ten premierships. Um, always going to be a hard act to follow, but... Uh, I had uh, a lot of experience behind me, obviously, you know, with Dad at home, with Mark, with Jenny. Mum always had her opinion as well, so, um, and I had some fantastic people around me, um, Gary Treadray, Jeff Morris, so uh, it made the transition easier. Plus, the guys that I played with, I had great respect for them and they had great respect for me and uh, they knew the job had to be done and um, the winning formula was there, so uh, it was just sort of like uh, keep the ship steady yep. and on we go. What about going to Etherton? I mean, that was incredibly hard, wasn't it? It was. It was one of those things where the new facility hadn't been built at Alberton and there wasn't enough room, obviously, to, to have two clubs training on the one ground. So um, it was harder, particularly for the, the guys that had been at Port Adelaide their whole career. They'd won premierships. They'd, um, they'd been, you know, the star players. And all of a sudden, you're at a suburban club. There's, there's no fence around the oval. So there's, you know, there's people walking their dogs as you're training. I, I can remember actually one, one night, uh, Mark Clayton got cleaned up by a bull terrier just <laughs> screaming across the, uh, the oval while doing a drill. So, um, but to the credit of the board, um, in particular guys like Kenny McLeavy, um, Warren Rogers, um, they really got in there and um, the facilities almost sort of like mirrored what we had at Albert and we had the big bath that was, that was there, the lockers were there. And it was actually a newer version of what was under the old stand at Albert. And so, uh, although we got moved away and it wasn't ideal, um, we were given the best facilities that you could probably have and better than most SNFL clubs had anyway. So uh, yeah. the club did look after us in that regard. To Greg and Jack, I'll throw this to both of you because we were known always as a tough, uncompromising football club, which is why we got the success. But there came a time when we went into the AFL, you had to say to a lot of our players that have been great servants, that had won the premierships, and I'm talking, and it's probably unfair to name people, but I think Tim Ginova, George Fiacci, Roger and Darren Smith, Rowan Smith, there were lots of them. But you had to eyeball them and tell them they wouldn't be a part of the AFL. Uh, they must have been hard times. Yeah, that wasn't easy, but sometimes it has to be said. It's like if a player doesn't train hard enough, we would say to him, look, you have to lift the tempo. If you don't do that, you go to another club and prove me wrong. So we did that. I've had players cry, you know, when you said, look, we, you can't be at the club anymore. You, you, I don't see you fitting into the team. Um, so that's really hard, but I love the players. I loved every coaching session I had there. Um, used to love training, didn't matter whether it was wet or dry. Loved every bit of it. Um, Stephen, the number of players I've spoken to over the years and you sort of you ask, why was Jack so good? Why did he win 10 premierships? And the same answer comes up that he, he made every player believe that they were the best player he'd ever seen. Is that, is that accurate? He was, he was, uh, he was terrific at that. Um, the ability to uh, make guys feel really comfortable. And, you know, we, we're starting to learn a lot more about this. And I've learned a lot from Jenny just about the psychology of football and, uh, and how uh, to get the best out of people. And um, Jack was as good as anybody and probably still would be today, just at, at making you feel really good about yourself. And, and we're a lot of guys in our side that, uh, you know, they were world beaters, but um, with 
the uh, faith that Jack showed in them uh, and the way that we play their footy, it was just a, a really strong team that went out there week in, week out. And, um, you know, we got the results because uh, we knew that Jack believed in us. And, uh, you know, it's just a fantastic thing to have. Not a lot of people have that ability, but, uh, you know, 10 premierships certainly speaks for itself. Greg, just finally to you. Um, we went into the AFL 97 within a short space of time. I think twice minor premiers and then in 04 win a premiership. That's an amazing rise in such a short space of time. Is that what you're most proud of? Uh, thanks to Mark and the players and all the people around the club, the most exciting day of my life. It's uh, just outstanding. And to our members, you know, I, I can still, the, the faces of people, everyone we saw after that victory in 2004, I enjoyed a lot that Jack uh, brought to us as a, around the board table, but uh, being the first one in the AFL, uh, the only downside is I've got a 12-year-old grandson and he didn't see it. Yeah. I want to see him see another one before <laughs> he gets too old. Well. But uh, 204, fantastic. Yeah. Please thank our very special guest, John Cowell, Greg Bolton, Stephen Williams.